Hiding in the shadow of one of the empty trucks parked inside the compound, Solid Snake took a long look around. What Hallie was looking for was something that would give him an indication of where Metal Gear might be concealed. A hatch leading to an underground silo, maybe. Or a building within the complex that was more remote and more fortified than the rest. But he was handicapped by the fact that nobody in Foxhound Command knew what Metal Gear would look like. Was it something so big it needed a huge protected structure to house it? Or so small that it was only a deadly microchip, computer triggered or radio controlled? A barbed wire fence around a building was no guarantee that Metal Gear was to be found inside. It could be anywhere in Outer Haven, even in Colonel Vermin Katafi's shirt pocket. All he had to go on was the name, Metal Gear. Somehow that hinted to Halley that the weapon itself was large and needed a sizable building to itself. Crossing the field that separated the outside fence from the windowless complex of Outer Heaven, the young Marine captain spotted a door at the base of one of the buildings. Using the key card, Halley placed it in the slot on the door, face down. He could hear the latch click, and he pushed gingerly at the door. It opened to his touch. He was inside now, on the first level of the first building. He pressed himself against a wall, becoming a shadow, and let his eyes do the walking. There were many doors along the hallways of Building 1, and all of them were guarded. Armed and uniformed terrorists, most of them carrying high-tech automatic weapons, were everywhere. Solid Snake knew that at least at the start, he would have to avoid the guards wherever possible. Once he knew his way around, once he located a weapon of his own, he'd be able to fight. For now, though, the only intelligent thing was to remain concealed. But for how long would Halley's concealment be safe or effective? There had to be surveillance devices everywhere in the compound. Halley scanned the walls and ceilings for the telltale red eye of a video camera, but he didn't see one. That could mean the cameras were hidden from view, or it could mean that other types of sensors might be operating. Heat seekers or motion detectors, for example. They were common devices, frequently used in securing premises. Those would certainly tip off the terrorist leader to the presence of an intruder. But if that was so, wouldn't the patrolling guards confuse the sensors? No, it had to be hidden video cameras, linked to some giant console control board somewhere in the complex. Solid Snake looked around for stairs leading to the upper floors, but he didn't see any. Two elevators, east and west, according to Halley's compass, were all that were available to Solid Snake to get him from the first level to another floor. The elevators were an added risk and posed a real danger of possible entrapment. Also risky were the corridors leading to the elevators. There were three of them. Halley looked, took the one to the left. He found himself facing three doors. He tried his key card on the first door, but it didn't respond. Why not? The slot for the card was there. Why didn't the door open unless... For the first time, Solid Snake realized that there might be more than one key card. In fact, now he was certain of it. Each individual card opened only a small designated number of doors, and it would take more than one to open all the doors. How many keys would Justin Halley need to fully penetrate Outer Heaven? Although Justin didn't know it, there were actually eight key cards that used together unlocked all the doors in the compound. It was an elaborate system in which the higher the soldier's rank, the more key cards he was entitled to carry. Only Colonel Vermin Katafi himself carried all eight key cards. His two most trusted terrorist aides were entitled to six each. But the key card in Solid Snake's possession did manage to trip the second lock and get the second door open. Halley slipped inside the room. It was a small room, little more than a closet, and it smelled bad like chemicals. The room gave the young Marine a bad feeling and he wanted out of there. But first he forced himself to look around. 
Something was lying on a shelf near the door. Hallie grabbed it and ducked back outside. Door, the door clicked shut behind him, locked again. He looked at the thing he was holding in his hand. It was a gas mask. Considering the chemical smells, the gas mask made perfect sense. It was probably used during experimentation in that room. It could be useful, but what Solid Snake really wanted was a weapon. But he decided to keep the gas mask and move down the corridor. The guards were still patrolling, back and forth, up and down. Now they were coming Hallie's way. Their heavy boots, making cadenced footsteps, sounded closer and closer. Hugging the wall, Hallie raced off in the opposite direction, to the nearest side door of level one. Quickly, he tried his keycard, which he now thought of as keycard one. It worked! The door opened, and Hallie was back outside the building before the terrorist guards caught a glimpse of him. Three military trucks were parked just outside the door. They were marked with the same strange insignia of the other vehicles he'd seen outside the compound. Hallie ran swiftly toward them, hoping to find them unguarded. He was lucky. No terrorist guards were in sight. Quickly but thoroughly, Justin began to search the trucks. He was looking for something. Anything that could be useful in his mission. Luck was with him. In the left-hand truck, his fingers closed around a familiar something. A pistol grip. Justin Halley had to bite his tongue to keep from letting out a yell of triumph. But his moment of triumph was brief. Halley had found a handgun, the Beretta M92F, a lightweight weapon, yet accurate and deadly. But with it, there was no clip of ammunition. The gun was empty. Still, it was a beginning. Quickly, Solid Snake pocketed the empty Beretta and moved on to the right-hand truck. He avoided going near the truck that was parked in the middle, convinced that it was a trap. He'd noticed a thin, almost invisible wire snaking from under the truck's chassis, and rightly presumed that there was a detonator somewhere and explosives in the truck. But maybe the truck on the right had some clips of ammo stashed in it to use with the gun. He searched it carefully, but it yielded nothing in the way of bullets. It did have a special steel pocket hidden in the door of the cab. Using all his strength, Halley forced it open and found some anti-tank mines. Good! These might come in handy. Halley added, added the mines to the small but growing arsenal he was beginning to put together. With the mines and the Beretta, Halley made his way back across the compound and used his keycard to get back inside Building 1. Peering around a corner, Halley could see the guards approaching. He was close to the east elevator. It was his only chance. He dashed quickly to it and used his keycard to get the door open. The guards passed an instant after the elevator door closed. They saw nothing. Halley pressed the elevator button for the third floor. He decided to try to proceed systematically from the top floor down. But when the door opened, Solid Snake caught a glimpse of something familiar. Little red eyes. There were infrared sensor cameras on the third floor. Unblinking, all-seeing little red eyes. The young Marine captain had to keep tight up against the walls to avoid the surveillance lenses. He figured that the entire complex must be monitored. Some parts with cameras, others with heat-sensing or motion-sensing devices. How long would he be able to escape detection? Justin Halley suspected that the evil Colonel Katafi was using... Part of building one as prison cells for the snake men he'd already captured. It was part of Halley's mission to set them free. But Commander South had warned Solid Snake that perhaps some of the snake men had turned double agent and shouldn't be trusted. Halley found that hard to believe. The men in his squad had all been courageous, highly trained, loyal, and patriotic. The snake men were the best, hand picked. Their special forces training was the toughest in the world. Only the handful that came out of it in one piece were allowed to call themselves snake men. How could they change? 
What kind of torture could even a fiend like Colonel Katapi devise that would make a snake man betray his commander, his squad, and his country? Because Solid Snake still only had one key card, he could only go in through the doors it opened. The first few doors he tried failed to respond to the card, but the fourth door opened when the key card was inserted. In the center of the room, a prisoner was tied in a, ch in a chair, moaning, nearly unconscious. The prisoner was Chuck Robinson, a snake man, a good friend. How he should have stopped in the doorway to assess the situation for possible lethal booby traps or explosives. All his training had prepared him for caution above everything. But he couldn't help it. When he saw Chuck in that chair, he ran forward to his buddy's side. Chuck! Chuck, it's me, Hallie! The man stirred and raised his head a little. Solid Snake? Justin, is that you? It's me, good buddy. Let me get these ropes off you. Think you can stand up? Well, I'll give it a try. But Robinson was not in any shape to stand. When the ropes came off, he fell to the floor in a heap. It's no good, Hallie. Leave me here. Try to set some of the others free. They they may be able to help you. Maybe if I rest a while. Solid Snake was reluctant to go, but there were over a dozen other prisoners, if they were alive. He had to find them and set them free. They were his Snake Men brothers, his comrades in arms. He couldn't leave them here to die. Listen, Justin, this is very important. The heat panels. The heat panels. Don't try to talk, Chuck. Just take it easy. No. No, y you've got to listen to me. The heat panels. You can't get to Metal Gear without crossing the heat panels. They're, they're terrible. Terrible burning. They burn. Chuck's delirious, thought Solid Snake. He needs medical attention badly. Eat the rations. Eat the rations. You've got to have plenty of rations if you want to make it through, or you'll die on the heat panels. Chuck kept mumbling the same words over and over, his voice weak, but his words heavy with urgency. Right, good buddy, will do, said Solid Snake softly. Listen, Chuck, I'm going to leave the door unlocked for you. Try to make it out of here. If you can't, I'll come back and get you after I finish with Metal Gear. Is that a go? Chuck nodded wearily. But the heat panels, he said again, listen to me. You've got to raise your own body temperature if you want to survive. You gotta eat. I hear you, Chuck. Take care, Solid Snake. Hallie nodded grimly. I'll take care, he promised. The key card opens other doors in which he found several more Snake Men prisoners. All of them had been tortured, and several of them were unable to speak. It almost broke Justin Halley's heart to see his friends in such a condition. He set the men free, promising to return and get them all out to safety once his mission was completed. So far, none of the rooms had contained any ammunition for his Beretta. He needed weapons to penetrate the inner defenses of Outer Heaven. He had to keep looking. From one of the rooms on level 3, Solid Snake could sense something seeping from under the door. The odor, bitter and stinging, was, was unmistakable to anyone with Hallie's training. Poison gas. Hallie put on the gas mask. Should he avoid this room or go into it? His sense of survival told him to stay clear of the poison gas. But his logic said something different. Why would the terrorists bother to gas the room unless they had something of vital importance hidden there? Solid Snake had to take the risk. Using his key card, he got the door open. It was a large room, and at first it appeared to be empty. But as Solid Snake crossed it, wearing his gas mask, the floor suddenly tilted up, sending him lurching backward, unable to keep his balance. There was a terrible rumbling sound growing louder and louder. Through the fog of poison gas that filled the room, 
Solid Snake found it difficult to make out what was happening. Then he saw it. The deadly trap. A huge rolling device. A giant steel pin, eight feet long and weighing 3,000 pounds, heavy enough to crush a man to death, detached itself from the wall and came rolling across the sloped floor, coming at him at top speed. Unless it was stopped, in only a few seconds, it would smash the life out of Solid Snake. 